My mom always told me about God. I think I had an idea that God was big and good, but as time went on and I saw more and more tragic things happen around me, I think that was the beginning of me just questioning everything about life and about God. When I was 10 years old, my stepdad came to pick me up and he said that my cousin, Kelly, was dead. I remember being so mad and really just, just deciding that if God was big and good, why wouldn't he protect my cousin who is so tiny and so awesome, such a funny, brilliant little guy. Why wouldn't God protect him from a huge muscle guy like his stepdad who beat him to death? I remember thinking that same year that my cousin died about the depth of the evil in the world. I never wanted to have kids. It was just a new person to suffer. That was the year I started to cry myself to sleep every night and stopped believing in God. I couldn't get away from my own depression. So I started studying other religions. There was a lot of nice ideas, but there wasn't any tangible healing. And I remember thinking, I'm tired of the pain in my heart. I'm tired of going to bed that way. I'm tired of feeling like a burden. I'm just tired of not knowing why I'm alive. And so I remember the night I laid in bed and I knew I was gonna commit suicide the next day. I knew that I was not gonna live past tomorrow. On the day that I planned to commit suicide, I came home from school and my grandma was there and she wasn't supposed to be there. And she looked at me and said, there's something wrong with you. You're gonna go to church. I was like, no way I'm going to church. And she screamed at the top of her lungs like we were fighting back and forth and I just didn't want to listen to her yell anymore. And so I decided, fine, I'll go. And then afterwards, I'll go ahead and follow through with my plan. So I went to the back of the church and slumped down in my chair and hated everybody in the room. And the pastor started speaking and I hated him more than anyone. And he says, there's a suicidal spirit in the room. And of course, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I was, well, this is really weird. <laughs> and I got up and went to the door. A white-headed man is standing there and he stopped me. And it was like, the Lord wants me to speak to you. He wants you to know that even though you've never known an earthly father, that God will be a better father to you than any earthly father could ever be. God knows the pain in your heart. He's seen you cry yourself to sleep at night. The idea was so overwhelming to me. He's like, do you want me to pray for you so that Jesus can take the pain out of your heart? He put his hand on my shoulder and started to pray. It was as if the God of the universe showed up right in front of me. And the first thing I noticed was that God was holy and good. And the second thing I noticed was that I was so not holy and not good. If God had looked at me and said, go away forever, he would have been right. It would have been just as. The same time I felt that, I felt him inviting me to an embrace of grace and love unconditional. It was like God was saying, I love you. I know you're tired of the way you've been living and I will make you new if you will let me. My heart was just, yes, it just said, yes, I, I need that, I want that, please. And that's why I woke up the next day. 
I just felt such a peace and a joy almost that I had never felt before. Jesus saved my life and on top of everything else, the life of my son and the new baby. That wouldn't be if Jesus hadn't intervened and rescued me. And the most overwhelming thing is to think that Jesus became sin and it was my sin and it was things that I've done the house him on the cross, it was things that I've done. He hung naked on a cross, bleeding in a shameful way, so that I would never have to be ashamed for the things that I've done. The truth is, the truth is, there is no other way besides Christ and what he did. There is no life outside of that.